Who doesn't love the Babylon Bee? It's become a staple for everybody on the right. As you watch all around you, the world goes crazy. You go to the Babylon Bee and you get a laugh. Well, I mean, maybe a little harder to find these days because they just caught a temporary suspension from Twitter. What for? For declaring Rachel Levine to be man of the year. <laughs> and joining me now, Seth Dillon, of course, who the Babylon Bee is his baby, and he's done an outstanding job with it. All right, Seth, first and foremost, temporary suspension, right? You are, you are coming back. Well, that, that all depends, I guess. I mean, they, they, it's a 12-hour suspension, but the clock doesn't start ticking until we delete that tweet. So we're kind of like, I mean, when they, when they ask you to delete the tweet, they say, uh, do you acknowledge that you have, in fact, engaged in hateful conduct, yes or no? Like, you got to check that box to delete the tweet. And we're saying we're not doing that. We, we haven't engaged in hateful conduct. In fact, this is a joke that happens to be true. It's making a true point. And we stand by the point that it's making. And so we're not we're not willing to de delete the tweet. And so we're currently stuck right now in this kind of limbo where our account is live on Twitter. We just can't use it. Seth, this is not the first time they've gone after the Babylon Bee, the various powers that be. And, and I, I just I'm curious why it makes them so angry. It's just a satire site, is it not? Why does it aggravate them so much? <laughs> Oh, man. I mean, they can dish it, but they can't take it. I think that's ultimately what it comes down to. You know, the left loves to ridicule people who disagree with them. They do not like to be ridiculed or mocked. They don't like to have their ideas ridiculed or mocked. And as you know, they're not very good at defending their ideas. And so when, when someone comes after them making really good arguments or making jokes that make their ideas look silly or the sacred cows that they're protecting look silly, uh, you know, they bristle. They don't like it. They want to they want to stop it instead of engaging you in debate or just muting you. They could mute you if they don't want to listen to you. They want to deplatform you and take you down. And they've done it a number of ways with us. I mean, they've accused us of misinformation. Now it's hate speech. You know, the hate speech thing is the new thing. They have this whole uh, policy against punching down and making fun of people you're not supposed to make fun of. Um, and so, you know, we reject the whole punching down thing anyway. I don't think that there should be people who are off limits. It's not like, you know, we're all, if we're all created equally, then we should be able to joke about each other indiscriminately. That's my view on the whole thing. But, and I think we're punching up, if anything, because a lot of these ideas that we're attacking come from the top down, you know, and the, and the, and the people that are supposedly marginalized and oppressed are people who can get you fired if you simply make fun of them and hurt their feelings. They have more power than I do. Yeah. Uh, if there's a list of people you can't criticize, that's the list of people who are in charge. I think that's a Voltaire quote, although obviously not exact. But all right, now, Babylon Bee, obviously, again, it's a humor site. It's a satire site. It's freaking hysterical. But somehow you guys keep getting it right with predictions, and I'd like to know why. I'm Federalist did a piece on it that you guys were joking about the White House getting TikTokers before the White House actually got TikTokers about Vice President Dome turning to Hillary Clinton. I mean, there are seven gigantic ones where you were making a joke and it turned out to be right. Why? Well, I think it's the challenge of trying to stay a step ahead of reality when reality is, is heading in insane directions, right? It's, it's the same thing. You know, The Simpsons has repeatedly gotten things right. South Park is getting things right. Um, and it's when, you know, satire by its nature exaggerates the truth to make a point. And so we're going in the direction the truth is already pointing. It's just a matter of when the truth catches up to us, when reality catches up to us. And in this absurd age that we're living in, it's catching up to us very rapidly. Sometimes some of our stories, which we call them fulfilled prophecies when they come true, some of them have come true the same day that we've written the joke. Sometimes it's <laughs> the next day. Sometimes it's a, a week later. It, it occasionally takes two years, but the fact that it's coming true so quickly after we make these jokes is just a, it's, it's funny, but it's also extremely disconcerting. Hey, thanks so much for watching the first on YouTube. If you liked what you saw, go ahead and like and subscribe. You heard me like it, subscribe. You'll get a lot more of it and a lot more of me.